Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about Aether SX2, Ryu Jinx, Lemuroid, as well as Dolphin MMJ and MMJR. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about the best PS2 emulator on Android, Aether SX2. Now, Aether SX2 just released a pretty massive update and also unveiled some future plans that have to deal with the Raspberry Pi. So on Google Play right now, if we check what's new with Aether SX2, it says performance improvements and bug fixes. Too many changes to list here. There is a full list on their Patreon page. And we can see it's updated March 18th, which is the current date for this video. If you use Aether SX2 and want to consider becoming a patron, I'll leave a link to their Patreon in the description below. Feel free to check it out. On here, we can take a look at the latest details for Alpha 1474. If you do have Aether SX2 on your device, make sure to update it from the Google Play Store. Now, the first fix here is extremely interesting. It says fix for Adreno Vulcan crashes on newer drivers, V525+. Plus. Normally, V525 Adreno drivers are not available on a Snapdragon 870, but they were able to test them thanks to Adreno Tools, which was developed by Bylaws. Bylaws is a developer for Skyline, the Nintendo Switch emulator on Android. So it's nice to see a lot of collaboration here between developers. In addition to that, Aether SX2 also benefited from the recent PCSX2 improvement, which was the automatic GS hardware fixes courtesy of Stenzek. So it looks like Aether SX2 now has automatic GS hardware fixes implemented in the main build. At a really high level here, these automatic GS hardware fixes take out a lot of guesswork when trying to configure games for the best settings. These settings are done on a per game basis and they're done automatically. I would say that's a pretty huge improvement. And speaking of improvements, Aether SX2 got some pretty massive performance enhancements, up to 20% on some games and devices. If we take a look at this chart here, this is Ratchet and Clank running on a Snapdragon 870. Before is represented by the blue and red is after. Before is 78 frames a second and after these improvements, it's running at 89 frames a second. The bottom part of this chart I think a lot of people will be interested in. It's Final Fantasy X running on a Cortex A73. A very old type of chip, before was 49 frames a second and 61 is after. So if you have an older device, it's not guaranteed things are going to be better, but there is still hope for you yet. And speaking about Final Fantasy X, for specific VU bound games, there's also a slight performance boost. Now if you're currently using or thinking about using the software renderer on Aether SX2, things just got a little bit better, actually a heck of a lot better. Performance is up about 20% on some games and devices. There's a pretty massive fix here, improvement rather, and games like Ridge Racer 5 now can be rendered entirely using the software renderer. Moving on from that, Killzone, which previously was pretty much unplayable, is now playable. And you can now add a background image to the game list if you want. I'm not sure you want to add this image. You absolutely can. It's entirely up to you. Last up for Aether SX2 is an update here for the future plans. And this is a big one, something that I didn't think was possible. They're currently working on Aether SX2 for Windows on ARM and also Linux on ARM releases, which means yes, Aether SX2 is up and running on a Raspberry Pi 4. Now being completely realistic here, don't set your expectations too high for the Raspberry Pi 4. Yes, it's up and running on a Raspberry Pi 4, but no, it's not necessarily playable. Playing Final Fantasy X here, frame rates drop in the single digits, and that's well, that's not necessarily promising. It might get a little better, but I highly doubt it's gonna get to 30 or 60 frames a second. If it did, I would be completely blown away, but realistically here, you might need a more powerful device. Moving on now, and we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on PC with Ryu Jinx. Mario Kart 8 DLC just released, and it's already up and running very well in Ryu Jinx. In fact, online play also works. They had eight players, two Grand Prix, one hour, and no issues. If you are curious as to what games are currently being played online in Ryu Jinx, I'll leave a link to this site in the description below. It's ldn.ryujinx.org. Once you are here, you can see how many people are currently online, which is 80 at the time of filming. You can also see what games are available, Monster Hunter Generations, 
Uh, Pokemon Sword Monster Hunter Rise I saw there. If I scroll down, I can also see Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Moving on now, and we're talking about Wii and GameCube emulation on Android with Dolphin, just not the Dolphin from the Google Play Store. Two specific forks here, Dolphin MMJ and Dolphin MMJR. Both of these forks are geared towards performance. MMJ stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, and R stands for Revamp. Now it appears that both of these forks are going to be merged into one. Bankai Master, the creator of Dolphin MMJR and Gamer64, the reviver of Dolphin MMJ are working together now. I personally think this is a great choice. In terms of forks for Dolphin, we'll have two main ones, Dolphin MMJR and Dolphin MMJR2. Last up here, we're talking about Lemuroid, an all-in-one emulation solution of sorts for Android. It's basically an easy mode version of Retroarch, and it just got updated. If we take a look at what's new here, they've added in a few features for Android 12. They've added in beta support for Nintendo 3DS. They've introduced direct loading for PSP and 3DS. Added in support for external keyboards, added in support for gamepad and device rumble. We talked about this one in a previous video. Opening game menu now requires a long press. Slight improvements to touch control layout and behavior. Expose Sync Save button, update all cores and game database, and more fixes. Now, if you don't like Retroarch, maybe it's a little bit too complicated or convoluted or you just flat out don't like it at all, I recommend checking out Lemuroid. It is an easier to use, more straightforward version of Retroarch. It may be not as feature rich, but at the same time, it slims things down and make things pretty easy to handle. And it's got over 500,000 installs now and is only growing. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts on anything we talked about today in the comments below, whether it was Aether SX2. Aether SX2 kind of up and running on a Raspberry Pi 4, but not really being feasible. Uh, Ryu Jinx, Dolphin MMJ and Dolphin MMJR, as well as Lemuroid. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.